first match. Yep. Let's go on to the second one. That's going to be James Bond and Ethan Hunt. Yep. I, I would I would believe I would believe Matahari could be Koopa. I would believe that. Plausible. But I will say I will maybe, say plausible. maybe I think even Koopa would do a little better than that. No, well, maybe. Any, We've all anyhow, had bad I'm matches. ready with the next one. I got the got the draft here. We got the James James Bond. Uh, ooh, they both like tan. Oh, so we're going to see some Tayan. You can pretty much guarantee it. Again, the algorithm is a mystery to all of us, but I'm pretty yeah. sure if both players put a venue as among their top choices, okay. uh, we should probably see that venue. If not, we're going to yeah. have to pop open the hood and move a few tubes around. Yeah. Uh, ballroom also possibly. Uh, we got uh, a one from Ethan Hunt and a three from James Bond. That's exactly what we saw last time, I think, with a with that tan it was um and yeah if one in three tends to do it that seems to be the sweet spot right there points wise <laughs> probably, probably no aquarium probably no aquarium uh definitely no aquarium no, yeah. probably no balcony terrace uh, maybe at the end what does the uh what does the great and wise yeah, algorithm say well i mean well we'll see because uh i kind of already know what it says but i mean it doesn't look like courtyard should be a pick yet uh you never know what the gabriotron will do it has a mind of its own. It's gone full Skynet, and it'll do whatever yeah. it pleases, and we will only beg for mercy, basilisk style. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah, beep, let's beep, go. Let's whoop, go. Weep, whoop. Here, here it's ready. It's all let's ready. Let's see if wow. I fix it. No, nope, I did not. It's still just the screen. That's okay. Yep, yeah, it is okay. That is the important part of the Gabriotron. Powered by a shark. I was going to mm -hmm. say, like, on a wheel, like a hamster, but I'm not sure that would work. It would have to be, like, a water turbine instead, right? Yeah, something, you know. Something like Anyhow, that. Hey, so, yeah, what do you so know? As, as I was pointing out, Courtyard is, in fact, there. Yep, I don't understand course, it. But Tan, of course, yeah, we expected that. Tan's first, because they both put it first. Surprise, surprise, mm -hmm. the algorithm makes at least some sense. Then it's going to be veranda, ballroom, yeah. courtyard, high-rise. I am ready whenever you gentlemen are. I am uh, ready as well. I... I believe I'm on the correct game. I see orange dress as uh, uh, oh, it's it's James. It is not Gab. There is not both Gabriels this time. It is, in fact, James Bond as OJ. Orange dress as James Bond, or perhaps the other way around on Tayen in three, two, one, playing it. We go from Tayen in one match immediately into the other, and James Bond immediately takes control and starts flirting, just like the real James Bond would. Thirty-five percent. It's a green test. We're across the conversation, but we're going to make up for that distance with the action test. Yeah, and we, we are standing currently at the very front of all the conversation circles. Not a spot that spies like to hang out on. It's not a great place to pick up bugs or purloin or anything like that. So I'm anticipating we're either going to timer flirt or bail out pretty quick here. We've stayed here for a while, so we might flirt and then move again. Because really, there's not much you can do from this position if you just stick around here. And our, our flirt is going to make, uh, our seduction targets make that decision for us. Yeah, uh, there's not much you can pick up out front, but you also can't pick up much of suspicion. Some people will absolutely lowlight you for hanging out out front like that. We're going to take a bug path and not bug, hopefully, trusting that Ethan Hunt is a good enough sniper to give us credit for not bugging a buggable position. We are going to bug here, though, and the sniper was zooming out at the time, and that's just going to be free. We're in a suspicious bug spot, but the ambassador came to us. That is about as good a bug as you're going to get on Tayen. Ethan spent a ton of time zoomed in. I did not like that on Tayen, especially when the ambassador was in a buggable position. We yes. didn't see anything on the map for a good three to four seconds. It's entirely possible that Ethan Hunt could have played that perfectly as Sniper and still not suspected it much, but they didn't. I think even a clumsy bug there would have been fine. Just, yeah, a little bit of a miscalculation on the timing of the zoom when the Ambassador was vulnerable, and that's the best you can do to try to minimize the bugs on Tayan, but it's not usually what the game is going to turn on. It might turn on something like this, though. It's a white banana bread. We are contacted by the Shoji. Two banana people bread. bail while we're talking, and we're offered a drink right afterwards. That's going to give us two lowlights, which from what otherwise would have been, I think, a perfect banana bread. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't take right then. But then again, when you have everybody in conversation circle, that is the maximum time that people can bail. So I've tried to curb my own disappointment when people bail, bail during the perfect banana bread, because that is, in fact, the most likely time for someone to bail during banana bread. Great point. And uh, wow, just shot. Someone who could have bugged and someone who was in the conversation for the banana bread is absolutely shot there. By the way, of those two lowlights from the sub-perfect banana bread. We only got one of them anyway, so it ended up being great. And there's a slightly jumpy but understandable tan shot onto Green Dress, who, let me see here, yeah, didn't do that much. Hung out in the back conversation most of the game. I think got an early highlight, it looks like. Let me take a look for what. Boy, I don't know. I don't know. I think flirt paired with Cowboy in the back window, it looked like early in the game, had a highlight since then and was in a buggable position, and that's it. 
Yeah, I just don't like the mission count on that one. Um, not yeah. to try to like not to try to drill into it too much, but really, the sniper should have known they had like another minute to decide on on orange, and so much can happen. Unlike the other games where it's like you can kind of tell the, what the flow of the game is, you can always have a late rush where someone that has been sitting doing nothing the entire game could all of a sudden turn on the engines and go for it right at the end. So, l- little impatient, I guess, is what I'm going for with Eve. There we go. James Bond up one nothing. Pretty good start. It was already looking like a pretty good game, and we didn't even need to complete it. First half was enough. Civ shot on Tayen. Very understandable. Now it's the spy as Teal in three, two, one, playing it. Our looks seduction like- target is Orange Sari, and the ambassador is Taft. Yeah, it looks like they agree on ambassadors. That was one of the one of the big things that people are trying to make guesses off of is ambassador selection, which might have some mind games on who you choose for ambassador selection. Taft, kind of the generic choice, some of the more distinguished choices are going to be things like Tex and Queen, but especially Smallman. There's a very select few number of people that like to put Smallman in as uh, ambassador, despite the suspicion status, because it makes it a little bit harder to track fingerprint. I don't yep. think that we're going to see that today, based upon the fact that we've seen um, Taft twice already. Our seduction target came in and joined us, which was very fortunate. A little less fortunate is that we hit a red test on the seduce right afterwards, but they have come back to us, and we have hit the action test a little distance from them afterwards. 32%, so it's not a green test. We're still going to need one at some point, even the three flirt. We're going to jam our arm into the ambassador during this bug as we enter the conversation, and I don't think it can possibly be seen, but the entry is awkward, and we definitely seem suspected for it, but it's so hard to tell from the sniper's laser movement. Yeah, I'm going to guess that Ethan's going to feel a little bit laser burnt, although they really should try to ignore that impulse in their mind if they think so, because lasers just earn a rest near the middle of the uh, of the of the screen, no matter what. Um, but right now, it doesn't. I would say that's about, about neutral. I think that's about like a very average bug. I think it got them some suspicion because you could see that they were going near them. But I also think it was fairly decent. So I think that's very par. And unfortunately, we're going to bounce in there. It doesn't really matter because it's not on screen. Um, but we had like the second bug opportunity right there. And in the red. Yep, I got another like... flirt in the meantime. It's a green test. 80, that should take us over 80%. We're going to finish it right afterwards. But in the meantime, between the two, we're going to get a real banana bread and bail pretty quickly afterwards. Just like that, there's two minutes left and three missions done. And it's too bad that Ambassador bailed before they had the uh, the chance to either reject or take drink. Um, we would have really loved that. Green thing. purloin. Green purloin, and it's totally on screen. James Bond is looking at it, and they're shaking their camera angrily. They think they don't like how vulnerable this ambassador has been, and I think they don't like the potential reject chain. They're zooming in on this list. Bling Twin's going to take it. There's the fade. Do we want to shoot Teal, Twin, or someone else? We're shooting nobody. We're shooting nobody with three seconds left. We don't think anyone's done, but they are, and it's the spy. Wow. One all. I was a little bit worried we would get shot for going for a, a fingerprint location. Um, didn't actually end up happening. Uh, and we also put ourselves in a position where we're out in the open if they needed to take a shot and they remembered who was there before. It's just the only person that could get a clean shot on. Maybe a little bit counterintuitive at that point, though. Um, so I'm not sure if that was good or bad that we went to microfilm, but um, at that point, Perloin goes off and we are too flustered to take a shot or to believe that they're done. Let me take a look at this. Okay, so the reason, we, there's two possible reasons for that camera shake. When the spy, when Ethan Hunt, Teal, dire- rejected the drink for the green purloin, the camera shook immediately on the sniper side. It could mean a couple things. It could mean I don't like how many people could bug the ambassador, but I think it means they don't like the reject chain because look at around 155, Orange Sari rejects. Right before that, Salmon rejects. So then a cast member after that. So that's three people. Teal is the fourth person third non-cast member to reject the drink in the front conversation and james bond angrily shakes their camera immediately because they know three people are in on that purloin potentially not including the taker that is absolutely brutal it looked like a really good game from ethan and it was a pretty good one but actually it looked to me like the sniper was really on that and just got totally totally hosed over by that reject chain yeah, and that's actually really great for that to be the final mission because perhaps we would have been one of the top suspects. But if there's a long reject chain like that, sometimes snipers like me, honestly, try to puzzle together what could have happened and they'll take 10 to 30 seconds to figure that out and then determine who they think is potentially the spy out of those. But in that 10 seconds, the game was over. Well, there were still 90 seconds left on the clock too. So there's a really good chance they're saying, you know what, it's going to be one more mission. That's a very reasonable thing to think, certainly. But Note well that three people, other than that cast member, rejected before the purloin took. Salmon, Sari, and Teal. The spy, Teal, the actual purloiner, was the only one who didn't stick around to see when the list was taken. The other two stayed put. Might have confused James Bond just enough. I don't know. 
I'm going to say a little bit of luck there for Ethan Hunt in what was otherwise still a pretty solid game. Got a little assist there at the end that maybe precluded a shot. Either way, it's going to be one all on Tayen heading into Veranda. James Bond now playing his ponytail in three, two, one, playing it. And Veranda, boy, you want to talk about love it or hate it venues like Tayen. Veranda is way, way up there. In fact, some people love the old art version and like and uh, don't like the new art version, if you know anyone like that. Flirt coming in right at the beginning. Just a nice, easy cross-conversation flirt, but it's in the tiny conversation, so we're not going to be credited too heavily for that. I also love that James Bond was shaking their laser in the, at the end of last game. That is that is on brand for James Bond. <laughs> well, it showed that they were completely on top of things, actually. It shows me that even though they lost that game, probably a pretty skilled sniper. And by the way, Slappy's narrating flirt stuff because I was talking about him earlier. I uh, was a big fan of old art Veranda, as I recall. That is true, man. I miss. I'm. I, I could go on for a while about what I could think to fix this map a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the gray I'm, infinite void, the fisheye lens. What was your favorite part? <laughs> your favorite part right now is the bush around the around the corner, so that you couldn't get an eye on the statue so easily. You'd have to rotate a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. only. That's like the number one problem I have with this map right now is that there's not a bush there, and you have a clean clean uh, line of sight. Um, oh, this is also one of the maps that I anticipate getting the most information about who is the, yes. um, the thing because of how you rotate your laser as sniper. So many newer players over rotate like crazy on veranda and almost all uh, more experienced snipers know that you have a very, you don't need to rotate red. that far to honestly get a view of everything. We got an inspect to break up the flirt, and right afterwards we got a green test, 80%, and then a contact right here, and it's a pretty good one. It is going to knock out Smallman, that's a darn shame, but only three lowlights total. That is really good for Veranda. Most of the conversation's full, two of them without SDAs, but you, so much, only so much you could do about that. One of them is at bookshelves, that's orange, sorry. And we now have most of two missions done, contact done. We are not going to do anything with this list. We're just going to take the drink and hang out, probably see where our seduction target Teal ends up after this briefcase and gets low lit for a cool little stop. This is some confident sniping from Ethan Hunt. I think we might actually have two very experienced players here. That could be re reckless and aggressive, but I think that's actually probably a skill thing. Low lights the seduction target for a little twitch step on the briefcase. Yeah, there's little spots where you can, um, if you're walking in place for a second or rotations where your feet are still moving a little bit, uh, that you can have a little bit of an anti-tell there. And uh, I'm just impressed that they're taking them on veranda. A lot of the times, there's just too much to watch for you to be looking for things like that. The Ambassador is moving all over the place, and right after that briefcase, they're going to go to blue bookshelves. The Ambassador, a veritable printing press, going full Gutenberg, printing all over the place all game. The question is, will the spy take advantage? They haven't yet. Two plus minutes, and only the seduction target has gotten one of those prints. They got a low light for it, for crying out loud. We do have a time ad in the meantime, though. It is white, but we're on the far side of the venue while the Ambassador and the list are on the other side, so I don't think it was noticed. And a great timing for that timeout, because I was just about to say that James was a little bit behind the curve on this one. We were setting up the uh, kind of obvious starting spots for spies while they figure out what they want to do. We hadn't picked up a fingerprint yet, so our the rest of our game plan really hadn't had any form yet. Um, so we instead, we took the time ad, which is going to give us a lot right now. One thing that's interesting, zero highlights at all on this map. Except for yeah, the but, except for ambassador well, and Toby. here's a well here's a big moment. Some people don't highlight for statue visits; they highlight for inspect completes. And if they or do that, yep, James Bond will get one right now for their second visit. That is what's going on. That will narrow down the sniper list quite a bit if the low light already didn't. And by the way, that low light on the seduction target could be good, could be bad. It depends on your opponent. But what it is is confident. And when it's confident, it means an experienced sniper almost always. So I think that's what's going on here. There are a handful of people who do highlight for just inspect completes. It's a little trickier on venues like Veranda, but possibly more necessary because highlights can get out of control. We're going to do a red banana bread. I think that might have been an attempt at a drive-by bug as the ambassador banana passed bread. us. Instead, we're going to cough, and it's right on screen, and Ethan Hunt doesn't even need to think about it. No real suspicion before then, I don't think, other than finishing the inspect. Cough does it. Probably meant to be a bug. Yeah, and uh, like you're saying, on the uh, in on the highlight on second inspect it takes a lot of memory. You have to keep a lot of people in your mind um, as you're looking around for a lot of things. So the uh, Ethan seems to be able to process a lot, especially on a map like Veranda. So there's definitely newer players that just have a natural capacity for high memory, but so much of that is going to be practice and compressing memory down into the smallest bits possible, especially on a map like Veranda. So I do think that we're looking at actually a couple of experienced players, like you were saying. I'm actually formulating some guesses too, but that'll wait until the end in case I see something that convinces me otherwise and keeps me looking smarter than I actually am. Ethan Hunt is spy now on Veranda, up two to one, playing as Kane in three, two, one, playing it. 
that looked like a really solid game on both sides. That's a quick redirect, by the way, in the take control from Ethan Hunt. And I think we just want to... I think we really wanted to bug there in that pile up. But either way, we end up settling for the flirt. It's going to be a green test at Windows with our seduction target. One of the twins looks like plain twin to me. And we get the heck out of there right afterwards. And we have a lot of progress already. But the question was, was that going to be bug or flirt? And I don't know if the sheer number of collisions talked us into the soft tail route rather than the hard tail. This is kind of like meaningless chatter, but I really hate having seduction target be one of the twins because then I feel like I accidentally might have additional suspicion or uh, flirt suspicion attributed to me if I go near the other one, you know? Yeah, it's certainly possible. Although, if there's one venue you're probably not going to be worrying about being flirt paired on, it's probably Veranda of all places. Probably matters less, at least. Not a whole lot going on here. After that quick flirt, we've decided, well, I guess we have some time. Maybe we just want to see where people settle. The ambassador is about to walk by us, but we're already talking and we don't want anything to do with that. It's a pretty risky bug to take. I think we want to see where the seduction target settles. It teases us a little bit, walking by the conversation before snaking around it and going to an empty one. And Ethan Hunt goes the other way, actually. Looks like we're going to go get progress somewhere else. James Bond, meanwhile, is zooming in on drink takes, trying to watch the purloin. Ethan Hunt is in an, a perfectly innocuous conversation. I think we might have been going for a fingerprint there, but we're beat to it by Smallman. If not, we're just wasting time. There's a fingerprint on the green bookcase that I think we've been contemplating. We watch the ambassador go all the way there, and there's not much happening on the other side of the map. Uh, it does look like we're going into inspect instead. I don't think there's anything on this besides that. Uh, and Duke is going to go mess up our fingerprints as well. Uh, are we going to swap here would be the interesting thing. Because like right now, there's a lot of rotation on this side, but it's going to be broken up a little bit when ambassador moves around. Um, but right now, this is the side of the map that all the heat is on. Uh, so if we just go to the far side, unfortunately, double agent leaves as we're pathing towards them. I think we're going to try to finish up this flirt. We are behind the curve a little bit. Um, drink. There was a drink taken right there from Ambassador. Are we going to actually call over after the offer to um, Orange Dress? Looks like we might be positioning ourselves for that. And... She takes anyway, so that, that changes our options a little bit. There's two minutes left, by the way. We have two inspects and half the flirt. That flirt we got, that 51% at Windows almost immediately to start the game, almost nothing has happened since then. We have a green book now, and we do have a lot of obfuscation, but the ambassador and the guest list are right there, so the sniper has no reason to look basically anywhere else. Ethan Hunt seems to realize this takes the book out rather than starting the microfilm, even though it is the quote-unquote easier spot. We cannot squeeze in next to our seduction target between them and the ambassador, possibly a bug and a flirt, but we end up getting neither. The seduction target leaves right afterwards, bounces off, and goes into another conversation we probably can't fit into. Oh, boy. Yeah, and we don't have a finger. We do. Finger. Okay, so we were able to get in there. I mean, we're not going to finish Flirt from this position, but we can at least get some progress. Uh, I think we have a lot of hopes riding on this book. The thing is, though, when we got this book, all of the attention was on our side of the map. We're a little bit far in this conversation circle. I'm really worried if we get a white here. Um, we decide not to ditch. I was also worried that we're trying to, um, to ditch at that point. Although, actually, ditching right now would be perfect. He's not even looking at all on this side of the map. And that means we can squeeze in here next to our seduction target and feel pretty confident we're not going to get yeah. paired. We don't actually try to get low lit or anything. We just go to the other conversation. We do finish the seduce. And now that's contact on seduce done. Inspect two thirds of the way done. We still have a green book and we've held onto it for a while. So you got to imagine we're going to dump this back in red to have any chance. But we're going to want to bug first, I think. Nope. It's just going to be another bug path that does not result in a bug that seems to be the theme of the night and it's hurting me physically. This book is going to go in the red shelf. We'll see if the spy gets hurt physically in a second. This is a patient sniper, I think, and they're going to wait. The book goes in at 40 seconds. No shot has come off yet. Probably inspect swap at this point, though. What else can we do? 30 seconds. The beep beeps are about to start, and we're not going to care about that. We're just going to go into inspects right here. Are we going to try to inspect swap up front and hope it's not noticed? Maybe hit a green? We hit Maybe the distract green. With a fake. The green would be a lovely, because I really want to see comes. the... Nope. nope. Nope, we're just a really quick put back. Oh, man. If, if, we want if the bug. We want the bug. We're obligated. Indeed. I'm not sure if we're obligated to take that briefcase or not, but we want the bug. We walk right by the ambassador. We bug at the very end. We bug at the very end, and it's not on screen. James Bond is looking, though. I don't think they suspect it. it's a fingerprintable statue. It isn't going to help our case, but there's two seconds left, and no shot is coming off. Ethan Hunt somehow won that game, deciding to go for bug over swap, and it was not protected by James Bond. Yeah, uh, so we must have been completely in the background uh, during that last part because we did so much uh, quick animation breaking where we put book back really quickly. We put statue back really quickly. We went straight over to Ambassador. So the focus must have been completely on the rest of the map. And um, so uh, James Bond, a little bit non-responsive to late finishing on um, Veranda felt like they had a really good control of their suspects, a little bit too good of control of their su suspects, perhaps. They only had, they had a very few amount of highlights during the game. So I thought there was more hooks into us because they had more suspects out there that were not highlight. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, honestly, it looked like they had too much to manage. There was, as um, there weren't that many highlights, there also were very few lowlights. So I just yeah. think we were looking at too many places at once at the very end. Based on the sniper's positioning at the end, obviously Ethan Hunt was not much of a suspect like we assumed they probably must have been. They were watching one of two things almost certainly, either Wheels taking that fingerprint, a little suspicious there, keeping that dead on center in the screen, but I think more likely the only highlight white dress, the ambassador was pathing by them, pretty sure they were guarding against the reverse drive-by from their only highlight, and that causes them to miss the actual bug from Ethan, who goes up 3-1 with a spy win on Veranda of all places, and now into the venue that Ethan ranked number one, uh, Ballroom. But James Bond's going to spy first, playing the same character that Ethan just did on Veranda. It's going to be Kane in three, two, one, playing it. I don't know. So people that miss end of game bugs plus mirror their opponent's choice, that's, <laughs> that's pwned noob right there. But uh, I don't actually think that the rest of the play to me indicates that it's noob except for that. No, probably not. And I have a pretty strong guess about one of these competitors, but my guess for the other just took a major hit at the end of that last game. James Bond's going to talk to nobody and try to bug with their free hand, and it's not going to take. I'm not also sure who's suspected. Small camera shake, so he's also maybe in the pool of people that do camera shakes at all, because I think, I can't remember if it was James Bond that did the camera shake as um, as Sniper. Oh man, our seduction was. target comes right up to us. Uh, we only get the white flirt, but that is, that's that's going to be untraceable at that point because uh, Seduction Target decided to be so nice to us. Redirect right in the middle of the ballroom floor um, based on the briefcase. It doesn't look like there's any credit, either suspicion or not on us. Um, don't even know if it was really noticed and then it could just be a redirect in the middle of thing for nothing. Well, I mean, that might have been because they saw that redirect on the Seduction Target with the little uh, briefcase move I mentioned in the Veranda game and decided, hey, this is worth fishing for, but it doesn't work here. We're going to get another Seduce in the meantime. It's a green test, 85%. So that's almost done already. Still a couple minutes left here. We're going to take this fake because it's too good not to. Red. It's going to be white and we're going to let off, I think, just one low light. That's going to be Queen. But Ethan Hunt is holding and waiting to see if anything happens in the wake of Banana Bread before taking that low light. Very disciplined, very good, but it's not checking the list. They are just banking on the ambassador. They were just worried about a bug in the wake of that banana bread. Did not care when Boots took a drink to see if the list was still there, or they thought they could see it from a distance, one of the two. Yeah, really love that banana bread right there because we were, there was like three or four people scattered out among very many conversations. You're almost positive there's at least one other suspect, suspected double agent in somewhere. Uh, and uh, that something is going on and that uh, you're not gonna get all of a sudden screwed over by luck. Even, yeah, if, but, even if the SD is in your conversation. Which and here is, comes the real one. It is going to follow the standard spy heuristic, bread. though, is that when you hear two banana breads, the second one is usually the real one, and that's the case here. Teal's going to take a drink, and suddenly, it's really interesting. Ethan Hunt is double zooming on the list sometimes when a drink is taken, and sometimes not reacting at all to drink takes. Very, very interesting. Either way, the Seduce still is 85%. We only have a minute left. The contact has come off. It's been really good. It's come off twice, as a matter of fact. We still only have one low light for it. Queen, by the way, was missed. That low light was never taken because we were guarding missions instead in the wake of the banana bread. So that cost us that. The Seduce is not going to get finished. White Dress is going to bail on us. And we were already running on time, low on time, even if it took. White Dress is going to go, looks like, go for the briefcase instead. Nope, going to get beat there by that fine looking gentleman in the suit. And we still only have one mission done with 45 seconds left. Yeah, White's animations are so slow that she started way before Pencil Stash, but she just she just so slow on her drink. She's got a, she was sipping first and then bending down to get the uh, get the drink. We might get lucky right here. Is she coming in? Nope. Uh, she I don't. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, you, there's no way to take the seduce and finish anyway. So you shouldn't even be looking at her at this point. By you, I mean the spy, of course. You need to do something else. Time add or purloin and get some one shot. We're gonna go to the windows. The beepers have already started. This is just too late. This is just too late. But we have no chance. We either need to purloin or time add, and we've got to do one of them right now. 15 seconds left on the clock, and we are just staring off. We might be committed to this timeout, as a matter of fact. I think we're gonna try to do a zero second time add. Yes, exactly. Like this, I swear it's not me, but this is something that I would do. <laughs> this does look like a U game a little bit. Here's the green test. It is a green at least. It is a green at least, but we leave very quickly afterwards. The clock is hanging. It can only be one of a few things now. I'm really what, curious to see how Ethan reacts to this because that's going to inform me a lot on who I think that this, yeah. uh, this player is. Whether big they're moment, this. big moment just then. Queen took a drink and the beeps did not start, which means we could rule out the hanging purloin unless that was the spy taking their own green. So that narrows it down to swap where no one's been at statues or or the green time ad. And we bug by the way, and we got a highlight as it was happening. And then the purloin leads to the beep beeps and the shot. That was very interesting. We were able to rule out the purloin being the cause of the hanging clock because a drink was taken just afterwards without overtime starting.
Yeah, I, I'm actually really curious what the last mission should have been. We were really lucky to be able to get that bug off. Uh, I think that it was pretty clean. And actually, it was. It would have been bad if bug was our final mission because the beep beeps next to someone going, uh, ambassador going exactly. right after them would have mean they would have been dead. But then I don't know what the last mission really should have been. Uh, and important to note that Ethan did highlight um, Papa after coming back into the conversation circle, uh, um, pretty suspicious of that green time ad. So yes. we had the hooks into us. And then uh, was it was it Disney that was with us at um, at Windows at the end there? Somebody joined us at Windows right at the end there. Um, and it, it was, was yeah. dental person. It was, it was so. Disney. Uh, that sounds right to me. Um, very interesting. I actually think the sniper showed incredible command of the situation because the clock is hanging. When the clocking is hanging at zero, one of three things has happened. Either there's a pending purloin, be it bar or tray. There's a pending swap or there's a green time ad late in the game. It has to be one of those three things. Shortly after, Queen took a drink and the beeps did not start, which means unless it was literally Queen hitting a green purloin and then taking her own drink, you could rule out purloin. Once purloin was ruled out, shortly after, the highlight came onto the spy because no one had been at statue. So I think at that point, they basically knew. And then, as you mentioned, even though they could have bugged, because no beep started, no shot came off. It looks misleading. It looks like they got away with a bug, but I don't think so. I think if the beep start were shot for the assumed bug, but because they didn't, because we actually time added with very little mission progress, not needing one more mission, the sniper was able to hold and wait. And when the beep started on the drink take, that's all they needed. Yeah, man, imagine that bug is actually excellent just in general. And man, if we got that bug off earlier in the game rather than just not getting anything done, I think we would be able to do anything for the last mission and be pretty much okay. Yeah, but, or if the failed bug on the way into Windows at the beginning of the game had taken, for that matter. I think you could have gotten a little closer without much more suspicion, and you would have been clean. I also find it really interesting that we committed to the uh, the time ad with, like, 24 seconds left. Like, we we decided that that was going to be the thing we were doing um, really early on, rather than trying something else and then going to it right at the end, which uh, I actually kind of like. Because if you're gonna, if you were going for that, like trying to rush down two missions right at the very end, it's probably less likely than working than um, sitting and marinating at the window pad for a while. It was still a little early. We were there for a long time, mm -hmm. but it makes that play much more believable. Where um, if uh, if Disney had done something like, man, if Disney had rejected, let's say that drink beforehand or something, uh, that purloin may have actually worked. Disney was actually very suspicious. Checked the watch at almost the exact same time. Uh, that would have been great to see. But um, also important to note. Ethan is patient, didn't overreact to any aspect of that. The fakes, the, the second BB being real, the time at the end, the bug at the end, anything very, very calm, patient sniper. Yeah. Ethan, patient. We shouldn't be, though. You and I are lapsing into slow cast territory. That's on me. Ethan Hunt is going to be the spy now at 4-1. to one. There was a lot to unpack there at the end of that game. That was a very action-packed 30 seconds. A lot happened, and the sniper, as you mentioned, showed total command of the situation and what was happening. Either way, chance to take an almost insurmountable lead here as Spy on Ballroom playing Leopard in 3, 2, 1, playing it. I have to imagine that the um, the players have felt each other out as, as relatively experienced by this point as well. I think so. Even, even with the 4 to 1 margin, I think Ethan probably knows they're up against a pretty good sniper. Maybe an overly patient one slightly, and given their penchant for finishing so far, it looks like, that's probably pretty good. They're going to idle in this conversation. Maybe, maybe a lot of low light fishing now. And by the way, it would make sense that you'd see more of that after the first few games. If they both conclude the other is experienced, suddenly things like that at the beginning of the game might actually be worthwhile. If you think you're up against a newer player, you wouldn't waste time on it, probably. For a while on our perch here, um, and the very interesting setup on Ballroom right now, it's really just that middle conversation that has anything going on. We don't go for the reverse bug because of how clear it would have been. Um, but it does obligate us for this um, briefcase, which we're going to get and shouldn't have too much suspicion on us. Um, we're only going to have to walk part way down or actually, do you recognize when that thing you actually take? Whoa, we're going to totally just t just cheese this. We're going to put it down immediately. That is definitely not valid. But I think the whole idea is just really not to be noticed because there's nothing else to look at over there. And once you pick it up, sometimes the sniper will credit the print and move on. So why not? Or they don't notice at all. Either way, I think we were trying to get away with a clean print, and I, that makes me think that we are going to want to finish prints, hoping we'll only be credited with one. By the way, we finally get a seduce in. It's green. That might make up for lost time because we have a little over two minutes left and half the flirt done, half the fingerprint. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we're probably in a timer flirt here. Uh, we're looking around a little bit for what our next position could be. There's that... Um, there's going to be... Well, it's going to be refreshed right now. I think that's the same statue that Ambassador was just at. Thanks, Ambassador. Um, so we might go for... Uh, 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 inspect on a side statue to an inspect there if we want to. Uh, 
Um, I feel like if they don't go for inspect, if they're going to go for that um, fingerprint, that tells me a lot about who this player might be. Certain players yep. hate inspect on ballroom, and some of those are my guesses as who it could be. So not going for inspect when this when there's such a clear line to inspect, flirt, contact, and then finish with fingerprint on that side statue. Yeah, they, this is really interesting, by the way. Uh, so we tried to enter next to our seduction target, and as soon as we bumped into someone, oh boy, hang on, I'm going to hold my own thought. That's a wrong arm bug into this conversation, and that was very visible from at least one angle, but it's not clear if the sniper saw it at all. We are, by the way, really trying to act like an AI pathing-wise. We are going in for a flirt, and when we hit someone, we turned around immediately and gave up on it and went to Windows, even though it would have been perfectly fine to sort of keep going, bounce off, and end up next to them anyway, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to smash in there, but there's a real commitment from Ethan Hunt to look like an AI in the micro in particular. I think we might have gotten away with this bug the seduce is done as well now we're being offered a drink and i don't think we want to take it nope sorry that's the twin next to us but we're going to be up next twin takes we're going to leave no more use for this there is a briefcase here at statues and a print on this statue as well we're going to try to do both it looks like i think we were obligated to take that case kane right next to us agrees that could hurt us if that's noticed either way the fingerprint is done and we're going to get no inspects done no inspects done not even attempt ourselves with the inspects at all which I'm actually surprised about because that just gives us leverage at that point. When I didn't just see contact. the inspect come off, um, yeah, it is just going to be contact. Oh, but this is the, this is why you at least give yourself the option potentially, uh -oh. right? It's going to be a rush purloy now instead. The double agent not only leaves but goes to a window, and we have no idea where they're going to go. They could stand there for seven or eight seconds, especially if they take this drink. The drink is rejected. They check their watch instead, and we're doing the same thing while waiting for them. We're going to have to go back here and swap it, looks like. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go to back station. A double agent is back in the conversation with five seconds. If we'd known they were going to go here, we would have done this instead. But it's going to be a swap. It's going to be visible almost certainly. The sniper, are they protecting it over time? They don't know who to shoot. They're going to shoot the seduction target. Ethan Hunt goes up five to one. Yeah, uh, so it looks like we were suspected for, or sorry, the um, the Irish was suspected for potentially finishing and specs right at the end there. I don't think that's the timing for that, honestly. I feel like that would have been done a little bit earlier, but um, it we is. Were just, we just weren't a suspect. I mean, that's just what it comes down to, is there's just no suspicion on us. My guess is maybe neither print caught and the bug not suspected and no contact has gone off either. So we're not even worried about a swap at the end of the game, because who would finish like that in a silent game? Yeah, I was really concerned uh, that we were also going to get shot for finishing inspects, right? Because we were stepping in for our second pair of inspects, but little did they know we didn't actually even get our first pair of inspects. Um, but we do something that actually worked out in our favor, which is we went past um, Irish to go swap the statue next to them so that it was actually blocked. And that actually saved us because of the fact that they didn't see the swap means that it was potentially a inspect finished, not that it was a guaranteed swap finish. And that kept uh, Irish in the pool of suspects. But it's an easy enough thing to catch at the end of the game if you're looking for it. The reason the spy wins is because the sniper did not suspect them, as far as I can tell, at all there. Or was tunneling on green dress. It could be that, too. Either way, uh, that could have been an absolute disaster. If we'd waited a few more seconds for the double agent just to see where they settle, they would have settled with about five or six seconds left in that conversation. And I think a banana bread probably has the same effect there with five seconds of OT. I don't think we would have been a suspect. If we weren't caught for a swap in the back like that, I don't think we were going to get caught for a simple contact. And... The spy rightly decides, though, I can't risk them not going in and have to do something else, so I'm going to go swap instead. But it turns out would have been just fine if they'd waited. Either way, chance to snipe for the win here with a definitive 6-1 victory on Courtyard. That's all I got to win, a sniper game on Courtyard. James Bond's going to be queen in Her Majesty's service in 3, 2, 1, playing it. On brand, at least. Call it out, but seduction target as well. So okay. it seems like that's the, that's the final game is when you whip this strat out. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. This is the kind of thing you do when you've maybe lost all hope. Certainly made me lose all hope. James Bond isn't doing anything, by the way, just staring out at the windows. Is our seduction target going to come to us as we enter? No, they're going to spurn us. They are going to go meet us at the exact same spot, though, that we were just at, as if following our scent around the venue. We'll see where they go next. James Bond, nothing done. 2.45 left. Yeah, James Bond also right... Oh, it actually, works. Yeah, there it is. Oh, my God. Okay. I was kidding before. I had no idea that was going to happen. And uh, we take advantage, though, at least. Green test, 51%, and suddenly we're right back on schedule. Yeah, uh, and we're getting offered a drink here. I, I think we're just going to take an innocent drink at this point. Yeah, I was curious if we were going to... Sometimes spies get really loose when they're down like this and just put chaos into the map and uh, hope that something catches because uh, really, like, uh, when you're trying to deal with both thinking about the game and exhausting yourself, but you're also behind and demoralized, sometimes the easiest thing is just to mash the buttons and hope that something happens. 
I mean, it can go either way, right? You see people react both ways. Sometimes they play very tight. They try to play the cleanest game possible and maximize their chance for that game. And other people say, no, I need to make something happen. I'm frustrated. It's the equivalent of sort of a rage rush. Or they're thinking, I need to tilt them because I'm not going to win all my games. Otherwise, I need to shake things up. You see both reactions potentially, and it depends on the person and the circumstance. And James Bond so far is opting for the clean game. We have another flirt done in the meantime. But this one, we've gotten to 68%, even though the first was 58. You almost never see that. That is the worst flirt possible right after the best flirt possible. Yeah, and we are going to set up for a contact here. It's pretty good um, if we can get it off. And we are going to white test. I don't red. think that's going to matter too much, although it does knock out our seduction target. Um, so hopefully yep. we notice that if we're going to try to put a frame down at all. We really wanted a bug, I think, but it's not going to happen. Two fullest conversations both had a DA or an SDA in them, though. That is a really, really good contact. And by the way, the low light on the general has not taken place yet. In fact, they get highlight for going to statues. We saw this earlier. There was a low light available earlier tonight on Queen, I remember, as it was, on Ballroom that never got taken because we were guarding against the bug in the aftermath. And it seems like that's happening here. We are actually not taking low lights on Banana Bread necessarily. We're too worried about missing stuff. And instead, oh our seduction frame. target goes from low light to highlight. I think oh, this might be a swap frame, and this would be huge if we actually get this. Uh... They're watching the fade, though. They're watching the fade, and it doesn't happen in the first cycle. The sniper has guarded it effectively. They've done the right thing, and we can't actually do it. That might have been the plan, but James Bond, if so, read the laser and realized they couldn't do it. Would have really been something if they missed the low light into a highlight into a sieve shot. But Ethan Hunt, not taking the low light, does watch the fade at least. We're going to go into next to general. We're going to smash that like button, and then we're going to set up for our last mission. <laughs> Well done. Seduce is done. They do like each other. They choo choo choose each other. 20 seconds left. One mission left to go. What's it going to be? We really want a bug. We don't want a purloin. We want a bug. We're going to wrong our bug. It's totally on screen. Ethan Hunt's going to line up the shot and take the victory definitively. Six to one again with that patience. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the question there is like when, when Sniper's watching Statue that closely, <laughs> uh, it's kind of like this weird uh, split incentive where you actually know that they're probably looking for the green swap at that point, uh, but they're also looking at it so closely that they might see the fade difference. And so you're yes. caught in this problem where you really, really, really want to swap, but you know it's the one thing you can't do. Right. I actually like the decision. If that's what's going on in James Bond's mind, I like it quite a bit. I like the idea of you're going to go to statues, you're going to look to frame. If the laser positioning looks right, you'll try it. Or, and or, you get the right statue animation, right? So they were guarding looking from the right, the sniper was, to the spy's right. If the, you hold it down into the left, go ahead and swap it right then. Force them to make the difficult decision. But if you don't get that, and you didn't, and the laser was clearly on you because it wasn't even moving very much, then you have to mix it up. But you give yourself a chance to go in on that frame. I think it was a perfectly fine decision. Problem was just a little too late there. Watching the bug in the waning seconds, I am going to say with a fair bit of confidence that Ethan Hunt is OP rights. Yeah, I was actually going to go for the same thing, especially with how they played um, uh, Ballroom. And actually, honestly, a little bit of... I would say they were a little bit worse on Veranda than their other maps. And OP actually is a little bit weaker on Veranda. I think they actually still picked up the win there. Um, but uh, yeah, I I would say that you can never be 100% sure on these things, but just how the play style went up and how patient they were and their decision-making during it and how calm they were mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. how they stuck to it. I... Would, uh, would Opie uh, miss those BB highlights though? Or low that, lights? That's a little out of character, I think. That, but the, but I, I, feel I... Like, I feel like Opie would have... Maybe, I mean, maybe he's just... Because he doesn't know... Because he doesn't yeah. know his opponent, maybe doesn't want to take that risk. That is kind of the primary question, right? Is that in what ways are you going to alter your normal play style when you don't know who you're playing? And that does seem like a plausible one for me. And it could just be a mistake. It could be I'm going to camp even harder, right? Which means mm -hmm. I'm going to deprioritize the low lights on those, and I'm going to prioritize catching things like bugs and purloins in the wake. I'm going to base it on certainly ranking ballroom number one, also ranking gallery very low and library fairly low. Uh, OP banned gallery and, re and than... redwoods and aquarium and redwoods and aquarium. Yeah, makes sense. A gallery, their most banned venue, by the way. So that fits the low ranking there and the statue inspects complete highlights not the initial visit highlights mm -hmm. all that i think adds up to probably opie uh james bond i'm not as sure i'm i i definitely think it's someone fairly experienced though i think uh this is a an odd score line or will seem like an odd score line when we see the well, names I, actually I, I, well like you know like being experienced and going up against you know opie that's you know it's it can be you yeah. know, if if that is if that is who ethan is or i feel yeah. like it, at very least ethan is somewhere in the platinum range I think, I think, yeah, both very, very experienced players. I but, think just the frustration on Tayen with the reject showed that they were totally yeah. on the reject chain, and that shows well, the fact just... that they did a shake. The shake means that you're at yes. a certain level, right? 
Well, I don't know about that. I, I've seen angry <laughs> shakes from all sorts of people. But the thing was, they shook immediately, which means they were waiting and saying, come on, mm -hmm. somebody take a drink already, which means they've been watching the entire chain very effectively. Just shows the kind of level of discipline. The immediate reaction of, come on, take the drink. Oh, no, you didn't. Terrible. Uh, just shows uh, just a discipline that I think conveys a high skill level, score notwithstanding. Um, right. Any other thoughts? Well, I guess we can reveal uh, the players' uh, predictions of each other. Yes, um, I think that's also uh, obviously very... wrong predictions. I'm going to say right now, James oh. James Bond guesses that their opponent is Catnip, and Ethan Hunt Hunt guesses their opponent is the Joker. Well, look, it's a cheap mm -hmm. win for me to just say that a guess is wrong because it has to go up against all the other possibilities that there are. Uh, but I will say fairly strongly, confidently, neither of those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like yeah, that's probably but yeah. Wrong. But what's what interesting say, is is a player like um uh uh, uh who uh which one was uh, guessing catnip? Uh, James Bond. James Bond thinking that they were that much below the other players yes. in Good core, point. and they thought no was that they thought that it was catnip. To me, that's a great uh, catnip point. is like a really solid player to me, like a little bit inconsistent but really solid. But the fact that they had such a beat on them, to me, thinks that they thought there were many leagues above them. I don't think that that's... Um, I think that this is a solid... I'm going to say maybe one of the... Um, that's a good point. Like a solid a a solid first, second, third place player in the bronze, silver, copper range. somewhere. I would say there. even lower. Catnip is an iron this season. So I'm going to say it actually could be sub-iron even then. It could be obsidian, certainly, or oak. I think that's an mm -hmm. excellent point. I think actually some of the high... So we were thrown off a little bit, I think, by those first few games. The first few games seemed very confident on the sniper side for James Bond. And I think maybe it's actually probably uh, an intermediate player or even a newer one, but one of those ones who's picked up a few very good advanced tricks early on. I think I think you're right, though. The catnip guess changes my opinion. I think Ethan Hunt, Opie writes, James Bond, probably at least four or five divisions below. And uh, anyhow, I think that's all we got for today. Or, well... For uh, for the Hidden Cup stream, anyway, there is, in fact, one more cast coming up later on uh, today and in about two and a half hours, I guess. Yeah, I think it's a beginner cast, and I think it's going to be here, yeah. by the way. And just to confirm, by the way, I think this has been the standard for Hidden Cup. Both of these players play each other in the next round of the bracket. Is that yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, actually, I guess I can show. Can I show the bracket? Let's see. Do I? Uh... Yes, that is that is incorrect. That is correct. What's happening? Uh, let me. Just look up the the bracket real quick so I can reveal things here and not reveal too much too many things. <laughs> so yeah, James uh, Ethan Hunt rather is going to meet Klaus in the next round. Yes. I, so we're going to see those uh, those two playstyles go up against each other. Should be very interesting, especially once we know who they are. It's going to be really really interesting when the tournament's actually over and we get to revisit all these. This is sort of like a, a an open world game with multiple endings, Slappy. You get to rewatch the entire tournament knowing who people are afterwards in a whole new light. It's kind of like a twist that redefines the whole thing at the oh, end right. of a movie. 